Hi, I'm Andrew Stevenson, and in today's video, we're going to make a few more puzzles for our Easter themed activity book. Now, although I'm making them Easter themed, you, you can make them with whatever target niche you want. But as it's Easter coming up, it's high time we started pushing these Easter books. So I'm continuing working on the document I made for the last activity tutorial. I'll post a link in the description and in the cards. The first thing we're going to do is create another couple of pages. So I'll add two pages with Master A, as you can see there. Master A is just the top and bottom wavy lines. The first puzzle we're going to make is a word search. Now, because this is aimed at kids, there's only going to be five or six words, and they're going to be quite simple. If you were making a more adult targeted word search, you'd probably have 20 words for them to look for. But we're going to keep this simple. And I know you can get software that makes crosswords, but you know, you've got to pay for them. This is free and it's easy, it just takes a little bit of time. The first thing we need when we are creating a word search is a list of words. So I'll do that now. As we're doing Easter, these are going to be Easter themed. So we will have egg, flour, oops, bunny, of course, chick, and carrot. Now you can think of better Easter words than me. I'm choosing these ones for a reason, but I'm not going to tell you what that reason is yet. So let's have a list of words, and now we're going to hide these words in a grid of apparently random letters. And to make that grid, we're going to use the table tool. So I'll just draw out one cell for the minute while we set it all up. So in the table tool, we are going to change the width and the height. I'm going for 0.8 of an inch. You pick whatever size best suits you. I'm also going to change the fill to white. And I'm going to change the alignment to center and center vertically. So that's the setup. I'm just going to make some more columns and rows. And I think I'm going to go for a 7 by 7 That, that's enough space to put all of these words in. And we'll just pull it up a bit. So now we're going to put these words into this grid. One letter per cell. Remember to go up, down, diagonal to make it a bit interesting. You can let the words run off the others. And I'll just take carrot down the bottom. So that's all the letters in there. If this was going to be a, a more adult i.e. more difficult word search and you want to put the solutions in the back of the book take a screenshot of this grid so that you know where the words are otherwise you'll have to go through and do each of your puzzles which you know i don't know you might find that fun but i don't but i'm okay not taking a screenshot for a couple of reasons firstly because this is aimed at you know five to six year olds so if, if they can do it i'm sure i can work it out and also, I'm not going to have a solutions in the back. It's not that sort of activity book. Now I'll just populate the rest of these cells with random letters. Again, if you were making a, a more advanced word search, you'd probably want to make like trick words. So the word almost spells flower. But you change the last 
letter or something like that. But again, for this kid's book, it's probably unnecessary, so... Throw a Z in for good luck. So that's the puzzle there. You could just leave it as a word list, but we're going to do something a little bit more exciting because this is aimed at kids. So first of all, I'll put a background on just so you, know, you can see why I made that white. I am just going to use a, a green rectangle like I did there. You can you can dress it up however you feel, put flowers on it, whatever. But I'm just going to go for a nice green background because I am going to be doing something with shapes anyway. And then drag that to the back. So instead of just having a boring word list, I'm going to have images of these items that's why i chose these words because i know i've got images of these hidden somewhere so give us two seconds and i shall add the pictures so there is each of the images that represent one of the words hidden in the grid i'll delete this now because i don't need it another thing that i think i might do is because you know there might be some ambiguity as to whether that's going to be a, a rabbit or a bunny or a hare. Is to have something underneath. Now you could either have it as a word scramble. So I'll just drag a text box underneath there. And use underscore. So that's B-U-N-N-Y. So that's a clue to say that there's five letters in there. Uh, and the kid can fill this in. You know, it's another activity. Or you could do it as a word scramble. So you'd have. And then the kid's got to put those words, uh, put those letters in the right order and have them find them in the grid. You know, either is a good option. I'm going to, I think I'll do the word scramble. Another good thing about this word scramble is that you can always just have it as a puzzle itself. So you don't even need the word search. It's um, This is just a nice puzzle for the kids to do. Now, I am gonna put a space in between each layer just so it doesn't look so much like a word. Spell carrot wrong. And again, you know, could have been ambiguity there. Is it a chick? Is it a chicken? Is it a hen? Is it a baby hen? So that's it. Get these all lined up nicely with the with the images. Then put a bit of explainer text at the top. So have something like unscramble. Make your text box big enough, obviously. <laughs> Unscramble the words below, then find them in the grid opposite. And I think another nice touch is if we, I know I said I didn't want to do the solutions to the actual word search, but you could have the solutions to the word puzzle, the word scramble. 
if you were just going to have a, a word scramble puzzle instead of the crossword you, you probably have the answers anyway you don't want to waste a solutions page so we're going to write the answers underneath and you know just turn it upside down so i will just add Just add a number. You can't have two number ones. That's kind of a rule. And then underneath. We'll have it doesn't have to be that big though. I'll turn it back down there. Go for ten. I'll have one bunny, two egg, three carrot, whoops, four chick, five flower. Now, if she goes out saying, take care to spell all of your words correctly, because there's nothing worse than publishing a book with mistakes. And I know, obviously, everyone makes spelling errors, whether just because you don't know how to spell the word or you've got fat fingers like me. But just take a couple of seconds to you know, make sure that everything's spelled correctly. By the way, to flip that upside down, just grab this handle and twizzle it about a bit. You can also use the rotate option at the bottom. And that's one puzzle, but it's technically two because you'd use a word scramble as a, as a legitimate, you know, interesting, fun, challenging word puzzle. Uh, the next one I'm going to try is... I'll add some pages again. This one's going to be similar to the word search in terms of setting it out, but it's going to be a little bit different. I don't know what you what you call these puzzles. It's where you get a selection of blank squares and a list of words to fit in those squares. And I've seen crosswords done like that where you do have the clue and then the answer in a grid without... Like, normally, in my eyes, a, a crossword is a grid with squares blacked out that you can't write in. The remaining white squares make words, and you find those words by solving clues. Some cryptic, some not. So I don't know what to call, call these puzzles, but, you know, they do exist. <laughs> I haven't just made them up. They are a popular puzzle. And we're going to start off in a similar way. We're going to select some more Easter-themed words. These words do need a bit more thought, though, because you're going to be crisscrossing them through each other. So we've got to find some words that will knit nicely together. Again, you know, four or five will do. So I'm just going to find a word list, and I'll be back. So here is my word list. And I have taken a bit of time to make sure that these words will slot nicely together. You know, it's had to change bunny to rabbit. And I've added bonnet in and things like that. So these are going to slot together quite nicely. The next thing to do is to make another grid. In fact, we'll go for 0.6 of an inch. I'm also going to change the fill to white again. I'm going to align, align at center. And then I'm just going to drag out some more cells. I'm going to make it 11 by 11 because I need more space to play with. 
Now we're going to add these words into the grid and this takes a little bit of planning. So I've already worked out how these words are going to fit together so I'll just add them. So that's it, that's all of my words in my grid. They all knit together quite nicely. The next thing to do is to decide how you're going to lay out the puzzle. There is an option to kind of do it like a, a word search, sorry, like a crossword, and just black out all the squares that you're not using. So just selecting all the white squares, go to cell and change the colour. You could even change them green or blue, whatever best suits your theme. So you can have it like that. Obviously these, I'll delete these letters before we uh, finish the puzzle. Or, in this way I think will look better. And it'll let you have a bit more space to add interesting things to. And for that we need to, first of all, remove all of the strokes and then add them, then add them back in around our words. Just select the cells. Click on all under stroke and then change the colour back to black. I'm going to have the puzzle and it'll just be the squares like that. I am just going to quickly remove the fill from the from the white squares just because it, you know, it, it's going to interfere with the rest of the pattern. So perhaps that was a mistake. And then we can make it smaller. If necessary, that should, that should still be enough room for the child to write in. So that's how the puzzle is going to look. Obviously, we will delete these letters out in a second. One thing you might want to do before you delete them is to separate this list into two. So we'll have an across and a down column. So if we just use this one for the minute. Across. We've got chick. Uh, rabbit and flower. So we don't need Easter. We don't need bonnet. We don't need carrot. Underline that. And then for the down ones we have carrot and bonnet. Now we could, you know, just if you want to save pages, just drag them there. Again, we'll put a background on. Now, because I removed the white colour from the table, the, all the grid will be green, but that, that doesn't matter. And I'll delete this. Again, you know, put decorations around the outside. You can also, instead of having the letters and the words here, you can do what we did above and have pictures. So for down, you'd have a picture of a carrot and a picture of an Easter bonnet. For across, pictures of chicks, rabbits and flowers. You could add numbers to these. 
squares just to make it a bit easier. So we'll have one there. And then put the corresponding number against the word of the image. Etc. Etc. You can also make these squares white by selecting them. Go to cell. Change it to white. Just to make it stand out a bit more. You could also have the so instead of just having images, you could again do the word scramble or the blanks underneath so the kids can fill in what they are. And again, it's probably best to do a word scramble for the sake of ambiguity. Especially if you're going to use bunny on one image and rabbit on another. And then again, simply add the answers underneath. So that's a few puzzles there for you to add to your book. You can adapt them for any niche you want in the activity genre it's very easy to you know make a word search for underwater hobbies sport dinosaurs anything same with this another thing we're going to do is this one isn't going to be a word puzzle this is going to be a simple paint by numbers now this was a suggestion from a viewer cat so why not give it a go in a kids book this is going to be really simple though so don't you know don't get carried away and start adding these to your adult activity books because you know you'll, you'll get laughed at so i'll just find an appropriate svg and i shall be back in a second yeah, so there is an svg of a lovely spring bird and we're just going to decolor this and then add numbers to where the colours were. So double click the image in Affinity and it opens up in this embedded, it opens up the embedded file in a new window here. And now we're just going to remove the colour from all of these sections here. So select them all with the fill highlighted and just move that fill to white. And then with the outline highlighted, move that to green we'll increase the stroke as well just to make it look look a bit more pronounced yeah that looks nice now shut this window down and you'll see that those changes have been applied to the image here now all we've got to do is just add numbers to these sections and then apply those numbers to colors so to add the numbers, we're just going to use a text box and centerize it. The eye can be one, the beak can be two, the head can be three, chest can be four. The top of this wing can be four, and the bottom of the wing can be four. The feet can be two, the same colour as the beak. And I will just make that a bit smaller so it fits in. A bit better to the foot. And then here we'll have number five, number six, and the tail can be number seven. Now that's not too bad, but I think the numbers are too dark. So we can change the color. make it select them all and I'll drag them to make them a bit grey there you go just so the 
the colour doesn't detract from the actual colouring in that the kids are going to do. And now we've got to assign colours to these numbers. You can, of course, just make a list, one to seven, and have a colour written next to them. So one black, two yellow, three whatever. Or you can do what I'm going to do and draw some squares. So one will be black. And then I'll just uh, copy that over a few times. So hold down control and just drag out a few squares. So we need seven because we've got seven colours. You make however many you need. And then we'll just change the colour. So one is going to be black. Two is going to be yellow. Three. We'll make that a ready colour. Four will be brown. Five. Let's make it a blue colour. Six purple for the purple wings, and then seven for the teal. Why not give it a green tail? And then just add numbers to these squares by clicking the text frame tool, and as you move the cursor into the shape it changes the text box from a square to a five-sided shape which i'm going to call a pentagon because that's what's called just click on that and then that entire shape becomes a text box and we'll just add the numbers that way so number one Number two, again, you can change the colour of these text, uh, these numbers to anything you want. I was keeping them grey for the minute. But, you know, black would work better in these colours and white would work better in black. And that's it. Now, each square represents a colour and the kids have got to colour that in. Remember to put your explainer text and again, you can repeat these puzzles four or five times. You've got yourself 20 pages just repeating these. And once you get in the flow of things, they are quite easy. Now it's taken me however long it's taken to make this video. But you know, if I was just concentrating on, on not on these out, it would be, you know, you, you'd do them in a couple of minutes each. So that is it for today's video. I know I've been missing for about a week or so, but my girlfriend's mother decided to stay with us. And obviously with everything that entails, couldn't get on my computer very much. So I'll try and upload a bit more regularly over you know, the next few weeks, get back to normal. Thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you have, I do appreciate it. It means a lot. I'll put a link in the description for these assets that I've got. They all came from Creative Fabrica. It is an affiliate link, so if you were to purchase them or sign up through my link, I'd get a couple of quid. Remember to like and comment on the video also. It really does help with the old YouTube metrics. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.